Now we'll talk some more about rationalizing the denominator and we'll look at several examples. In this first example we have 2 over the square root of 5 and this square root of 5 in the denominator is the problem. We're not allowed to have radicals in the denominator. In other words 5 is not a perfect square so the square root of 5 is an irrational number and we want rational numbers in the denominator. That's why this is called rationalizing the denominator. To make this, to make our denominator a rational number, we need to multiply by the square root of 5 over the square root of 5. Now when we do that, all we've done is multiplied by 1 because anything over itself is equal to 1. So this fraction here is just 1 and multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. This is still mathematically equivalent to 2 over the square root of 5. But multiplying by this is going to change the way the answer is written. When I multi multiply these, I just multiply across the top and I get 2 times the square root of 5 in the numerator and when I multiply on the bottom, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is just 5. And this is my answer and this is considered properly simplified, 2 root 5 over 5. And it's considered properly simplified because there's no radicals underneath my fraction. Let's look at the next example, 1 over the square root of 3. Well the same approach applies here. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. And I recognize that because of this square root of 3 here. When I do this, I end up with the square root of 3 on top and the denominators multiplied together. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is simply 3. So 1 over the square root of 3 is the same thing as the square root of 3 over 3. But written this way, it's considered to be properly simplified because there's no irrational numbers in the denominator. The next example is 3 times the square root of 5 over the square root of 11. Well, to rationalize the denominator here, I need to multiply by the square root of 11 over the square root of 11. And then when I multiply across the top, I have 3 times the square root of 55 over 11 my 5 times 11 both under the radical became a 55 here under the radical and having a radical in the numerator is okay and then on the bottom when I multiplied the square root of 11 times the square root of 11 that's the square root of 11 squared or just 11 so 3 root 55 over 11 is the simplified answer I've rationalized the denominator alright our next example is the square root of 7 over 2. Now the problem now is that we have a fraction under the radical and there's two rules and you can rem remember them easily. You can say that you, you're, you're not allowed to have radicals under your fractions and you're not allowed to have fractions under your radical. In this case we have a fraction underneath the radical. So to get rid of the the 7 halves under the radical I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna extend extend my radical here and take this fraction multiply it by 2 over 2 all under the radical and again I've just multiplied by 1 and that's fine you can multiply anything by 1 it doesn't fundamentally change it what I end up here what I end up with here is the square root of 14 over 4 and all of that is under the radical that can be split up into two fractions the square root of 14 over the square root of 4 and I know that the square root of 4 is 2 so I'm just gonna go ahead and write it that way and I'm done square root of 14 over 2 I don't have any fractions under my radical anymore and I don't have any radicals down in the denominator underneath the bottom part of my fraction now don't try to simplify this 14 and this 2 I can't cancel that out and simplify that to a 7 and I can't because this 14 is under the radical and the 2 is not so those are fundamentally different things this is not really a 14 it's a square root of 14 so it can't cancel out with the 2 this is the answer right here square root of 14 over 2 the next example is 5 over the square root of x okay, in other words this same technique here works when variables are involved 
to simplify this, I multiply by the square root of x over the square root of x. What this is going to do, it's going to get this radical out from under the denominator. When I multiply across the top, I get 5 root x. And on the bottom, I have the square root of x times the square root of x, which is just x. So this is considered simplified. Even though this doesn't really look any simpler than that, I've accomplished the goal of getting the, the radical sign out of the denominator. Okay, another example here, 6a over the square root of a cubed. Hmm, let's think about that square root of a cubed in the denominator. Well, I know that that a cubed can be written as a squared times a. So I'm going to rewrite the problem as 6a over the square root of a squared times a. And I'm going to imagine this a squared as popping out front and getting square rooted. So the problem now looks like this. 6a over a times the square root of a. And these cancel out. This a up top and this a down here cancel out. And so I just have 6 over the square root of a. But I have a radical in my denominator right there. So to get rid of that square root of a down on the bottom, I need to multiply by the square root of a over the square root of a. And when I do that, I end up with 6 times the square root of a on top and simply an a underneath. And that's the answer, 6 root a over a. And one more example here, the square root of 2x over 5y. Okay, once again, in this one, we have a fraction under the radical. And here's what I'll do. I'm going to multiply by 5y over 5y, or multiply by the square root of 5y over 5y. And note that what I wrote there would be the same thing as doing this. Watch. 2x over 5y. That would be the same thing as just extending my radical and multiplying by 5y over 5y. Whether you want to write it like that or like that doesn't matter. Those are mathematically the same. But just be aware of what happens when you do this. In the numerator, I end up with a 2 times 5, that's 10, and a x times a y, I end up with a 10xy under the radical. So my numerator is the square root of 10xy. And in the denominator, I have 5y times 5y, in other words, 5y squared, and all of that is under the radical. So the square root of 5y squared is just 5y. So I have the square root of 10xy, uh, the square root of 10xy over 5y. Now don't try to reduce, mathematically, don't try to reduce the fraction by canceling the 10 and the 5 and getting a 2. The 10 there is under the radical, and the 5 is not. And the same thing with the y's. I can't cancel out those y's because this isn't really a y. It's a square root of y. So don't cancel it out. This is, this is your answer. You're finished at that point. The square root of 10xy over 5y. That's your simplified answer. There are no fractions under the radical and no radicals under the fraction.